Everybody, thank you so much for joining us today on the hit viral pod by name Corn Corner Podcast. Welcome, corn dogs. I'm Ren. <laughs> and I'm Cam. And I Googled uh, the worst questions at a job interview, and this was my favorite. How will your arch nemesis describe you? <sighs> You're making me want to jump into the meat and potatoes of it right now because I'll tell you, I hate the questions that they ask on job <laughs> interview. Have you ever been asked that, though? No, but I've heard about somebody that was asked something similar. Oh, I can't wait and to talk I about it. I fucking hate it. We're going to get into it. Well, I think that we should get into it right now. So I think the first question is, when you're asked that... Where do you see yourself in five years? <laughs> How do you, what, your arch nemesis? Arch nemesis. How who would your that? arch nemesis describe you? That's uh, the, that's probably why it's on the list because like, who fuck the fuck you. is my arch nemesis? I don't know. Like myself, I like. <laughs> if somebody asked me that in a job interview, I think I would just look at them blankly. Like, yeah. Fuck you. They'd probably say a lot of negative things because they're my arch nemesis. I, How's this help this interview process? I was I was talking to Spectrum Internet people. Do we even introduce the word? We're talking about job interviews in this subject of this episode today. <laughs> people don't. Talking about job. <laughs> I was talking to Spectrum, the internet. Just and for fun. Yeah, shooting shit. <laughs> and this guy was kind of shooting the shit with me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, I don't want you to shoot the shit with me. I yeah. want you to fix the fucking internet. And I was like making all these jokes about stuff to like was he so conversely I, yeah i saw a thing on twitter about a tiktok i fucking hate it here where it was some a bunch of like millennials or something or whatever the one is under us i forget what this what i don't can't uh -huh. keep track of it all but how they're all annoyed with Trader Joe's cashiers because they were like, yeah. I'm not trying to have a conversation with you. I just want to buy my groceries and get out of here. Stop asking me how my day is. Yeah. And it's like, I'm not saying that's what the Spectrum people are doing with you or whatever, but the Trader Joe's cashiers literally have to do that. Like it's like part of the job. They are supposed to be like cordial with guests and engage yeah. in conversation and talk about Trader Joe's branded products. Like it's like yeah. a part of the gig that if a manager was there and you weren't doing it, you get in trouble. It's like upselling and stuff when you work as a server. Anyway, all that to say, maybe he, maybe he was contractually obligated. Maybe you're being kind of a jerk. I'm sure he was contractually <laughs> obligated. I just wish that the company would really change it. Yeah. Because <laughs> I don't want to deal. I don't want to deal with that. Sending your chair Joe's. No one wants to do that. Yeah, I was yeah. actually making a joke. It's like, yeah, you'll get a $4 something big. It's cheap. It's cheap. But you pay in the... <laughs> And the, the cordiality of yeah, the experience. Yeah. That's how you pay for it. And I think that is kind of annoying. But we're talking about job interviews, not I was mainly talking about how um We took the wind out of your sails, didn't I? Yeah. How <laughs> how the how the how different organizations act wanna be more friendly as annoying. It's the same thing with job interviews. Yeah. Don't ask me what what superhero I would be. What was the uh, you said at the beginning of a friend a so job? So someone asked what superhero that they would be. Oh okay, and it's like uh, fuck you. Well, I would immediately be like in an existing canon or a brand new superhero that I'm making up that I would want to be. Well, I think that that's the thing is that you can do whatever you want, but they're trying to judge you off of that and this and that. It's like shut the fuck up and yeah. just see if I can like do the job. That's I feel like. It doesn't count as a job interview, but when you're applying to live in a new place, the past, this this most recent time because of moving, uh, was like the easiest. Like, I didn't have to go. I feel like years ago when we would move, it would be this crazy rigorous interview process where you had to, like, prove that you were a, a competent adult and yeah. that you could af obviously afford it. You had credit, blah, 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 blah. But also, like, a conversation with you to deem if you were, like, a worthy person to live yeah. in the domicile, which is insane to me i think it's probably reflective of your growth as a person though what do you mean it's like you're that now at this point they're not asking me those things yeah because maybe it like, is just that with age I think and it's, it's not yeah because the this last time it was like do a credit check and i'll let me see your bank account or your tax return from last year and yeah, they're like good to go you're just, you're just growing <laughs> as a person well i I just complimented myself and pigeonholed that this whole thing yeah did you can't get out of that compliment <sighs> what was your first job Hershey Park. 
uh, uh, Hershey Museum, which is just adjacent to Hershey Park. We went. Yeah. We didn't go to the museum. I wish we did. We went to Chocolate World. Which is like a museum in a lot of ways. It honestly is kind of a museum exhibit ride. What did you do at that job? Uh, for the most part, I cleaned up the children's playroom and entertained kids in, in the children's playroom. But sometimes I would stand at different like exhibits and be a pseudo docent. Like there was a really old clock that was cool and had like a grandfather clock and it had like death on it. And the art on it was really cool. I liked being able to like stand at that one or whatever. What stuff was in this museum? I don't get it. It was just like Hershey related shit, which is so. Why would the clock be there? I maybe Milton Hershey owned it. I got. I don't remember that. Milton. Why the? Yeah, Milton S. Hershey. Milton Snavely Hershey. That's. The, <laughs> it was a lot of like history of chocolate, history of the town. He did a lot of like philanthropic work and and started a you know school for children, mm -hmm. which most schools are <laughs> school for like like. Yeah. What's the what's the PC way of putting it now? I Orphans. Don't I don't know how to word it. <laughs> Listen, the woke mob yeah. has, has Less infiltrated. Less privileged. This. Yeah. <laughs> like that. Like whatever. Yeah. At Milton S. Hershey School is still with like group homes and shit. And it's like a like a the cat's doing some stuff. <laughs> the cat is in a cr an incredibly precarious place <laughs> yeah. that nobody can see but. <laughs> Cam and I, and wow, and what is it going to do? And there's a huge fly flying around, and now she's like... What is that cat going to do? There's a mattress that's on its side, <laughs> and it's wiggling back and forth. This cat's on the top of it, and now the cat's seeing the fly that's been flying around the room for 20, 20 minutes. Anyway. And I'm just curious how Osha's going to get down, because every down is bad. There's a computer chair that swivels. There's a, a bunch of boxes. There's a record player. But she's going to hang out there. Anyway, anyway, what's the worst, worst job and worst job interview you ever had? Because they could be two separate things. It can just be the interview question, but I am curious about what's the worst job you ever had. Well, my dad owned a small business, so I worked for him. So I never had to do a job outside of working for him in Nepo high baby. school. Yeah, and a real Nepo baby over here. <laughs> I never had to do a job. Um, I was a janitor out through through high school. Yeah, and then in college. I worked in a restaurant, mm -hmm. and then I taught music lessons at the music store. That's cool. Yeah, was that was, fun? It was actually cool, but I kind of got let go because I my band would go on tour and it had to reschedule lessons around wanting to playing shows and stuff. Yeah, but it was cool. I actually remember this one kid that I taught uh, drums to, and I remember his dad. He was awesome. He was really bad, really, <laughs> really, really, really bad. But he really cared and wanted to get better. Yeah. But he was just so bad. And now I look back, I think maybe I was a bad teacher and teaching well enough. But they were cool. They're always there. What was the job interview like for being a music teacher? There was the music store just opened. It was brand new, huh? and they needed music students to come in and teach lessons. So there wasn't. And there was this one kid from the music from the percussion department. His name was Brendan, and um. <laughs> Brendan, great corn corner supporter, by the way. Great guy. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Shout outs. <laughs> he, uh, Brendan Meisner, he... Maybe you don't say first and last names of people on the public podcast. I don't know. You know, very smart. Anyway. <laughs> Bleep that out. <laughs> he somehow got in talks with the music store early on when it opened, and then he recruited a couple people. Oh, okay. And I was one of those people so he like asked. a shoe in. Yes, yeah. yes. So, but then I had to go in. I had an actual interview. I sat down. Yeah. And I remember being nervous. And I remember just, I, I, I dressed really nice. And I remember bringing my stick bag because I thought I might have to play something. Or yeah, something. that's what I was wearing. And I didn't to do. No, no, I didn't have to play anything. Um, that seems, well, but I mean, you're they knew. No, you're teaching kids. So it's, you're teaching how to read music to kids. How to so do you're, a paradiddle. <laughs> yeah, you're in, you're at a college level in the music school programs. Like you, no You're doing good. Things. Yeah. yeah. So, um, but actually, yeah, the issues that I had mainly were with scheduling. Okay. I think and we I had different go job path things. Yeah. Because these were all music focused. And then after college, like went into specific career stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So I never, I, but then when I worked at the restaurant, yeah. I worked in the kitchen. For, oh, yeah. I forgot about that. I worked in the kitchen because. Corn Corner, other Corn Corner supporter, Mitch. Yeah. 
worked in the kitchen and I just want to hang out with Mitch. I love Mitch. So Mitch got me a job in the kitchen. <laughs> Shout outs to Mitch. Hope you're listening to this episode. We talked about you recently with my 17 yeah. year old niece and talked about how cool you are. <laughs> He's so cool. He's now a luthier, everybody. He makes yeah. uh, instruments. One of the coolest guys so ever. Uh, he played bass in my band. Anyway, he not i always say my band but it's not my band the band that i was in it can be your band no it's not it's our band well um anyway he got me a job there and i remember you got a lot of making hush puppies and you got a lot of jobs because of people getting you the job yeah wow i've always i've rid every coattail i could you're saying that last night as uh-huh. a joke but now it's just no, like it's serious. proving its point yeah i'm serious i do but i i ride the coattails and you go yippee <laughs> <laughs> You've had a lot of different um, jobs from being a server to being a uh, uh, piercer yeah. person. I was in, most of my jobs were food service based yeah. through like the majority of my food truck. Not current. You career. love the food truck. I did love the food truck. Mm-hmm. I my my whatever is that I worked at the Hirsch Museum or whatever. And then I had to, I wasn't allowed to have a job because I had to play field hockey. I remember that. That was your job. Yeah. And it was, it was literally because I would play for fucking ever after school and then didn't have time to have a job. (sighs) And then once I went to college, uh, my first job was a server and uh, that was probably the worst one, like the worst job I ever had. People love to get ranch. Yeah. Well, it was a sports bar in central Pennsylvania. No. And (laughs) And that was back before the minimum wage anything happened so i the the wage for a server there because tips were supposed to take you all the way to a good hourly wage shockingly people at a sports bar in central pennsylvania did not tip well but it was like 250 something an hour was the was the pay and then you're supposed to make good tips to cover that it was abysmal (laughs) and it was also like the worst the restaurant itself the kitchen was upstairs with like two different types of dining rooms. And then there was a third one downstairs where all the really big TVs were for like football Sundays and shit like that. So (laughs) the servers would have to go down these like janky ass, super narrow, like short, like width wise stairs, like down the back of the kitchen. And there was like two blinds, like you couldn't yell coming to anyone on the other side. So it was just like, every time you went through and so many people just ate shit going down them with like trays full of like wings and shit. It was wild. Anyway, fuck you, Damon's. (laughs) Um, but there were cool people that worked there. And then after that was like probably my second, no third favorite, whatever food service one where I worked it for a wing place. And that was great. Wings. Yeah. I was a delivery driver for wings over wings over happy Valley. Did you pizza delivery too? No. It was just wings. Okay. Brad worked for another one called Champs, and he was also a delivery oh, driver. Right. So, like, that's when we were in college together. Are you, when you so when you got these two jobs, you had to go in for job interview. Yes. Do you remember it? I remember for the server one, I was super nervous because I was like, the, it was after I uh, fucked up out of Brown <laughs> and had to go restart at Penn State. So I was like a little frail bird yeah. and was a mess. And didn't know like what the hell I was doing and just was like, I just need to get a job and like start like being a human again, whatever, after the summer of being a mess. And I just thought they were going to be like, fuck off. Because I don't know why I thought the bar was higher for like being a server there, but it was not high at yeah. all. So <laughs> I was super nervous and like almost had a panic attack and like sat in my car and cried beforehand and almost didn't go in. Holy shit. But I was a mess then. But for the um, delivery driver one, I was a lot more confident. And also the job interview was basically like, do you have a good driving record? Yeah. And it was like, yeah. And it was like, are you reliable? Yes. Yeah. And that was it. That was, and that was super fun to How do. How did you quit both those jobs? Uh, I'm pretty sure Damon's, I just was like, fuck this. Like yeah. I just, uh, I didn't know call no show, but I was just like, I'm not coming back. Yeah. Like one day when I had a shift. How long did you work there? Probably only a few months, honestly. Yeah, it was awful. Yeah, it was terrible. <laughs> what about the other one? Wings Over, I, I think I worked for like maybe a year because I liked it a lot. Yeah. It was it was like fun to be a delivery driver. Do you feel like you learned the town, the streets? Yeah, I did actually. I was good at getting around there. Yeah. And that's not something I can say ever in my life. You will say it again though. Yeah, eventually. I mean And I mean that because you'll probably have to start being the delivery driver. Yeah. People <laughs> patreon.com slash corner corner. 
please. <laughs> no, I say because you're going to start driving soon. Yeah. I mean, even when I was driving, though, I didn't know where the hell I was going most of the time. But State College was a small town, and yeah. it was pretty easy to get around there. Um, Do you remember the Walking Dead show? Yeah. I remember the first season. I liked how they knew the stuff because the one guy could get around the city because he was a pizza delivery oh, person. Glenn. Yeah. yeah, and then the woman was a city planner, so she knew the streets. Oh, okay. That I, was a cool, I don't remember that fact, but I remember thinking that was so cool. I was like, "This is the the joy of the show. This is the the real meat of the show." <laughs> They're really thinking about it. Yeah, and then they like never really pushed with that. Like we got so far away from the real world and people's skill sets that the show got so boring. Yeah. That show got really bad. It did, but that first season was so good. It was. It's like and the concept, like a city planner, a piece of delivery person would never talk. The first season is also the only one that was directed by, I think it was Frank Darabont, and then the rest were directed by someone else. Mm. Okay, so back to, <laughs> um, were you sick of wings because you'd smell wing in the car all the time? No, we just were moving, and I think I was just like, Bye. Well, no, no, no. I'm saying oh. in general. Oh. Were you sick of wings? No, because also working food service means you get food for free. So I was, and I liked food, like fried food. Is that via free on the book or is that free the with the, the five night. finger discount? Yeah, the you know what I'm trying to say? <laughs> At the end of the night, if there's like leftover shit or if people like order something and cancel the order or it's a wrong order and they send it back, like you get that shit. We, my roommate, the you guitarist. told me about this, but please say it again. It's fucked up. The guitarist in Mitch and I's yeah. band, he worked at Domino's mm -hmm. and we would call into Domino's and order a bunch of shit at the end of the night and nobody would pick it up. And then he'd be like, well, gotta take it home. Yeah. That's how it is. <laughs> pretty funny. <laughs> it's um, actually a pretty good little, little con. But everyone at Domino's knew. And I also went in and I made pizzas a couple of times. Was that fun? It was so fun. Is it all like just on conveyor belts? Like it's like automated ish. There's like a big cheese machine thing that you hit and it'll rain down cheese. A big cheese machine. I wish it was just it's, called that. It's like a big piece of plastic that you put over the dough and you hit it and then it you hit just once. versus cheese. Yeah. That's awesome. But you hit it again for double cheese. <laughs> um, and then you put everything no on. No shit. <laughs> no, there was, there was no cutting of things, but there yeah. was... Everything came in bags, but it was still you had to assemble and stuff. Yeah. I mean, I... Anyway, go on. It I, was fun. I wasn't saying anything. I'm, we those got completely... Pos those just, possibles came out during that time, too. Holy shit. Those were so fucking good. I ate so many... We're just talking about college jobs now at this point. Well, that's where we got to start. Okay. Well, fair. Um, so you... So then at some point you interviewed for a content creator. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, okay. So I then, sat down with the powers that be and said, I want to get naked on the internet for money. Yeah. And they said... You got to get in the trenches. Website's called 4chan.com. Right. <laughs> Actually, um, 4chan.org slash B. Anyway. Anyway. Is it org? No, it can't possibly be. It's 4chan.com, right? We're going to talk about that on the next episode, yeah. probably. 4chan. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> God. So then, so you left Wings, and then you had an arc where you went somewhere else. 4chan.edu. No. <laughs> yeah. Trying yes. to get us demonetized. Yeah. Um, where'd you go after that? Uh, I did travel modeling stuff and then we moved to, uh, I did the same thing that you've done art modeling for school, so like fun. figure drawing and I stuff. Love it. I hated it. I loved it. No job in fat. Also, it was just, can you sit there naked for five minutes? And that was like kind of it. I like the energy that comes from being in a school. I would like either feel like I was going to faint from standing and doing poses or I would fall asleep if it was like laying down or anything. So funny. Or I would just feel like I was going to have a fucking panic attack from sitting and trying to hold still for like the 20 minute poses and stuff. I didn't feel any of that. I hated it. I loved it. I felt even like it was like a physical test. Oh, I was yeah. Like, that can makes I sense. do it? Like, I loved it. I was also like a very shaky period of life. Like all yeah. the, the ebbs and flows of my jobs through things. My enjoyment of a job had a lot to do with like <laughs> where those things were at. <laughs> so you were art modeling, travel modeling. Yeah. And then we moved to Minnesota, and that's where I worked on the food truck and in the coffee shop, and I love both those jobs. You did both those together at the same time? No. The, it was the food truck and then the coffee shop. What kind of food did the food truck make? It was just like straight up Minnesota slop food, where it was like tacos, but it was not. Like, it, it was, you know, beer, cheese, fondue, oh, like, shit, and so whatever. But we didn't have, we didn't make the food on the truck. We assembled it on the truck. 
it was made at the kitchen that we were connected to. And then we would just like load up the truck every morning when like the hot, you know, things. Did you interface with the customers? Yes. Front of truck? Yeah, <laughs> front of truck. Um, I drove it. Like, fuck yeah. yeah, it was awesome. I felt like such a baller. Like I would go get the fucking gas tanks full or whatever. How many in. people were on that truck? It depended on what we were doing, but it was two to four. Two to four. Yeah. How would you ever do food items or you were just money? I did everything. Does everybody do everything? Yeah. You'll like rotate like through a shift and that stuff. That doesn't feel efficient. I mean. To it, my brain. It wasn't like, I mean, you, you'd be there for like three hours and then would go on to like cashier for three hours or whatever the hell it was. Do you like that better or no? Uh, I liked doing the cashier stuff actually a lot because assembling food was annoying. Like to if you like got ratios wrong and the boss was on the truck that day, like sucked and was annoying because he felt like you were skimping customers. It was really fucking expensive for what it was. So I always overserved because yeah. I was like, Fuck who fucking you. cares. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but I like talking to people because I really like and it's why I like my barista job too. I like those one off interactions. Yeah. And I still do like talking to people at the coffee shop. Yeah. Because it's like, this is the extent of our interaction. It is cool that you do that. Yeah. We make it a little positive fun for everyone and then whatever. Yeah. I'm just trying to think about the efficiencies. Cause if, if I was going to staff a food truck, I think I would put somebody here, 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 and that's where you'd be for your shift. And if I was on that truck, I would not want to move around. I would want to be in my, situation for the for my duration of the day well think about how monotonous it is though when there's four items on the menu and you're just sitting there all right spooning cheese for six hours like, all right it kind of sucks um it was not an extensive menu so then you were a barista yeah which you, I, I also loved you were interfacing a customer there yeah or you were making drink i did both but i opened so like often i was the only person at the coffee counter because it was in a restaurant it was okay. like a cafe restaurant thing. So like you walk in and there was like a coffee counter here and then a food counter over there. So I did the coffee and bakery side. So I'd go at like six in the morning and open and like stock the bakery shelf container thing where they all the sweet treats are. Got it. Which was very fun for me. And I got to interact with like the bakers who were there working overnight. And I liked that because they were really nice women all the time, like super sweet. And then the kitchen guys were really cool in the morning because everyone's like yeah. upbeat. And you get to play your own music for like two hours before it opens <laughs> and all this cool shit. And then you get to be done by like 2 p.m. Yeah. And you don't have to close, which is the way shittier half of like if I was opening or closing, always going to open. Closing sucks. Yeah. And I would just get to be like deuces <laughs> and like. <laughs> um, What time did you get there? At like six. Oh, I would wake up at like five. I, I liked that, though. Like it would, it would be like pitch black. What time did you go to bed? Who fucking knows? I don't, I've never slept in my life. Has that always been a problem for you? Yes. Also, though, that was like the most serious job interview that I felt was serious for no fucking reason at that bar the that coffee shop restaurant place. Cause it was like a popular place that had like this trademark. I mean, it's called Yum. If anyone's like from Minnesota, Minnetonka area, I don't know. But there was like, it was like the woman who owned it had these specific like cakes called patty cakes like people would call to order a patty cake it's just a cake like it's i mean okay. a very well made the bakers were awesome there but it was like really expensive for a cake like i don't know why exactly still but it was a big deal <laughs> for some yeah. reason and i remember being super nervous for that interview and covering up all my tattoos and taking out piercings and like i braided my hair to one side so my like undercuts weren't showing or whatever and it was like yeah a big deal and to be like professional just to be like a server barista Slopping cakes yeah yeah like um, person <laughs> i wonder if the patty cake because okay if you're ordering a custom cake yeah. there is no real price threshold yeah they weren't always like i mean sometimes they were they had decoration on top but they were not like i want a figure skater yeah. or whatever Oh, sorry, what I meant was if you're ordering a custom cake, the money you already know you're gonna spend money. Yeah. It's nothing but a novelty for an event. Yes. And I would say if it's for a wedding or a birthday or something, the money doesn't even matter. Yeah. 
You'll spend a hundred bucks. My mom spent so much money. Our our wedding gift from my mom, me and Brad, was the cake. And it was yeah. very expensive and it was not good. So I think that <laughs> patty cake actually is a little bit smart where um, Miss Patty priced it at a point where she's hitting on those yeah. purchases out of necessity. Sure. Smart. We'll say that. Good for you, Patty. Good for you, Patty Cake. It was a really fun job. So, okay. So you love this job. You interface with customer. You kind of chop it up, yeah. as we say. And at some point, you had to leave this job. Yeah. Wow, how was how was that process? How did you did you tell Miss Pake that? Oh, it was a two Miss Miss Cake. Did you say Miss Pake? <laughs> it, that was a two weeks notice one because I like really yeah. liked working there and like respected them. The food truck was kind of a really weird leaving because our boss was like a kind of a little alcoholic. And would smoke cigarettes on the truck, which wasn't allowed, and did a bunch of shit that was like bad. Yeah, you can just leave that. Yeah, one. and all of us just left. Good. Um, but the the cafe place was a two weeks notice, and then we moved again <laughs> to Baltimore. And I think my first job there was the first and only was working at the tattoo shop, and which you barely counted there. as a job. Yeah, yeah, I did walk there. Did yeah. you? Why did it not count as a job? Because I wasn't paid. Oh, okay. Like, I was an apprentice. And your idea was that you were going to learn how to pierce. Yeah. And did you... What What was a day in the life? Uh, Once I was actually, like, doing some piercings, I would just do nose piercings, like, when those came in. But for the most part, I sat at the front desk and kind of just hung out and did, like, the normal, like, yeah. people come in, you talk about shit, A whatever. nostril yeah. is what you would do? Nostrils and lobes were the only things that I, like, actually got to do. It was a weird time. Pretty easy. People were going through shit at that shop. Yeah. And my the guy who was teaching me was going through a lot of shit. He's a really cool guy. I think he's doing a lot better now. <laughs> but uh, but I, I was like basically a desk person. Could you pierce a nostril to this day? Yes. It's not that hard. Especially if you have like the the tools and stuff. It's probably fun. I like doing it. People, I mean, it's a lot of stress because you don't want to fuck up a yeah. piercing on someone. Also, people are so nervous. Yeah. But I was good with that, like making people less yeah. nervous and stuff. You're really good at little quasi medical adjacent things. Yeah. I try. People. Anytime I got one that I got to do, I'll, I'll outsource it to you. Yeah. <laughs> I also just, that was fun because I just got to hang out, be a hang around at a tattoo shop. It was fucking sick. Honestly, yeah. Yeah. Like that's really what you want to do. I, I had a, most of the people there ruled. Like, did so you get a little a couple of tatties there? So many. That's why my leg is blacked out. Did you? And you left that at some point too. The tattoo shop. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you don't work there anymore. Yeah. How, what, what was the interview process like? I honestly don't remember. It was like you all right. My fucking eyeballs can't focus. Okay, are we good? So I couldn't see the time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, we are good, but I think. Oh, it's because the the piercing the guy who taught me was a photographer mm. and we did a shoot like at me as a model. We did a shoot oh, cool. and I like was, he like talked about being a piercer and I was like, Holy shit. I've always wanted to be a piercer. Cause that's true. I it like is. super, uh, admire piercers and tattoo artists in general. But, and he was like, well, like, why don't you apprentice whatever? And then so on and so forth. Wow. So Look. shout outs. Saints and centers. <laughs> <laughs> well, Everybody, speaking about jobs, we have a job to do, and it's to announce our sponsor of the day, and it's Christie's Catalytic Converters. And this is a shop to where if your catalytic converter is taken from you, Christie has a um, an extra, really is what she has for you. One. Um, to fit your car, absolutely. Yeah. And she's doing a special deal with a corn corner. And you were very excited about this deal that she was doing. You're the one that actually kind of fostered this um deal mm -hmm. right do you know why why because christy stole my cali converter she it's all a scam it? is what i'm saying people well, i wanted them to be a sponsor for this episode so i could unveil the veil <laughs> 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 of secrecy about christy's cali converters so you have to see the memes on instagram about cali converters and being stolen and how these zoomers think it's so funny to go steal a cali converter well i was in the trenches stealing copper pipe off the sides of houses they don't know what it's really like they're not out there stealing cali converters all right, all right. christy is all and right. she stole mine all right so let's Christy, wrap it if in. you want to come people 
We have been fighting with Christy in a legal battle for a couple. Stop looking at the camera like that. I'm not blinking. You're scaring, you're scaring everybody. I watched a video about where Michael Caine said how to intimidate people. He said, don't blink. <laughs> you're scaring him. <laughs> you're um, scaring him. <laughs> But no, Christy does need to be in, she needs the law to take care of this kind of thing, people. And we need the law. A cab, but she stole my catalytic converter. A cab, but also she needs a little bit of the the C part of that. That's a meme right there. A cab, but she stole my catalytic converter. (laughs) It's a bumper sticker. Um, To wrap this sponsorship section up, Christy's catalytic converters, um, she's a crook. But she is also sponsoring this episode. So if you want to use our promo code, um, Corn Catalytic, she will um, she'll put you in the good graces as long as she's not behind bar. And that's what we're really uh, hoping for here at the Corn Corner Podcast. Yep. <laughs> um. Anyway. Well, <laughs> so speaking of stealing copper pipe. Yep. You. Had some other jobs as well. Um, I just I want to acknowledge this episode has turned from being about job interviews to just being about jobs, which is fine for the record. Because well, now I have other things I want to talk about. <laughs> I hate job interviews, and I realized in the very beginning of this episode, I was just getting angry. Well, there you go. That's why we changed. I didn't want to talk about the interview process. I was just getting pissed off. We're thinking on our toes on that one. Yeah. So, what was? Did you have like a job when you were growing up? Was there like? A type of job that you admired the people. You know what I mean? EMTs. Oh, say paramedic instead. Oh, paramedic. I don't know. What's the difference? I swear I got them. Paramedics hate EMTs. They're different. I don't know the difference. There's, 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 I have no idea. And you never will. Is it, wait, is an EMT under a paramedic? I think so. I don't know. All I know is the, the, there's a, like a, uh, one of my friends who's a paramedic gets upset. When, when he's called yeah, the EMT. Called the MT, yeah. Well, paramedics, I remember being like, that was the thing. Yeah. I was like, wow, that's really, really Why? cool. To admire. I think the idea of helping people was really cool to me. Yeah. I think that the highly skilled, highly um the pressure of the moment was mm-hmm. really cool to me. And I still like that. I still like scenarios that are high pressure scenarios. Yeah. Good under would, a crisis. Good yeah, under a crisis. Whatever. I wish we had a little more of that in our but actually, I feel like, honestly, <laughs> doing live stuff is a little bit like that, which is why I want to get into. Um, we could turn this whole podcast into me wanting to commentate something like we like to do a lot. Yeah. Of. But that's why I like doing those things. It's like you got to get right. Yeah. You got to nail it on the first try. There's that's no second fun. takes. Just like life. <sighs> Thank you so much. What was when you were growing up? What was your thing that you admired? Construction workers. <laughs> I'm not laughing at the profession. I'm just laughing at it. It's just a strange one. I thought. One, I was like, these guys are hot. (laughs) Like, no matter what, I don't know why. It didn't matter what they actually looked like. There was something about them being construction, like being blue collar workers that I was like, that's hot. Like, those guys are hot. They're working with their hands. They're out there at like three in the morning fixing your streets. Yeah. Maybe if the city affords it. Uh, I I liked, there's a lot of like house building in like where I grew up. Like, and I had like the Amish people building houses fucking wild, by the way. I just thought it was so cool that people could fix things, make something from nothing, yeah. do manual labor, <laughs> like in a, in a skillful way. Yeah. When that's a, uh, I think a trait that has been lost in the world. That's where Carhartt started. Yeah. Get the work done. Get the work done, people. I don't know what Carhartt's slogan is, but get the work done. Sounds right. If it's not that, it should be. Yeah, that. yeah. Um, so I don't do car heart shit, but I do people who do car heart shit. You do people who do car heart shit. Yeah, I'm just trying to think of it because I don't think that that's true. I'm gonna be honest. I do people who do. Yeah. Does do mean have sex? Yeah. I don't know about that. At least one of the my partners does. I think that one of them could qualify as doing car heart stuff, but. Are you thinking of this one? Yeah. Okay, then two do. I'm so trying technically to... three. A butcher can wear car hearts. I a butcher can wear car hearts, <laughs> sure. But I mean I guess that's I, stretching it a little bit. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just trying to think of the other one. What car heart stuff does that one do? You're gonna need to talk to him about it. Uh-huh, right. All he right. He does. He's very handy. 
I know, but there's Hey-o. a difference. All right, that's Sorry. not um not appropriate. But um, there's a difference between doing Carhartt stuff and, and being, being construction handy. worker. Yeah, like you're a construction worker, you're doing Carhartt stuff. But, but where's the not, line? Now this is what the episode's about. Where's the line draw? Picture frames. You're not. I'm not doing, saying that's all. He's not just hanging picture frames. If you're moving a, a tractor trailer. Yeah. I don't think I don't think that's Carhartt stuff. What qualifies? What's the lowest barrier for entry on doing I Carhartt think, shit? This is, I know it. I know it. It's the consistency and frequency in which you're performing the Carhartt tasks. Okay, so if I start building like something it. of wood once a week, I think that that would. Qualify. Or if I have a project where I'm working on it, you know, I think that once a week is pushing it, but I think it's fine. Okay, so I can start earning the fact that I've been wearing cards for years now. <laughs> also, I think it's like a product of the area from which I grew up. Oh, I agree. Like I looked up, I I like looked up to those men as as a symbol of masculinity. I look, uh, yeah, and as a as a young trans man, as a young warthog reference that was very abstract. Uh, it was like that's what it, it that's what it looks like. To, like to be masculine trust me i even get sucked into the carhartt thing sometimes where i'm like damn a pair of carhartts is cool yeah you see this whole idea about them getting weather and the bide for life and the whole thing yeah i get pulled into it i got a little carhartt beanie that i don't like you can have it all right all right yeah it's fun color i think i might what color it's like mint green but like muted okay i think i want it yeah see what i mean i'm even Getting into the Carhartt lifestyle, everybody. Yeah. Now what? I don't know, but... Were she there ain't any- held a hammer in her life. <laughs> it's not true. Actually, you have a better toolkit than we do. Anyway. <laughs> Is there anything from... You've had to do after being the piercer mm-hmm. that, in which the job interview was there? No. I've... I've uh, since COVID, yeah. I have been like an adult and i think that worker. i think it's it's we should note here that throughout all these things you were you know i'm I made a joke about content creator but i mean you were making content yeah. throughout this whole time yes i and was doing as, m- as much as possible i know it's <laughs> yeah. like two huge it's two full-time jobs yeah it was uh the fucking covid really changed the game in terms of the amount of money you could make online yeah. it's crazy honestly it it totally blew the roof off that shit because i was making yeah jack shit before like yeah. that's why i would work two jobs yeah. constantly and brad would work too so yeah. it was like and we were barely making ends meet also i quit smoking weed which saved a lot of money <laughs> yeah and now you quit smoking smoking cigarettes yeah which is pretty amazing everybody a big corn corner uh congratulations to you from us and the fans that also does save a lot of money honestly cigarettes yeah. are really expensive whenever i it's yeah i don't want to say any more about it but yeah what do you mean it's just such a waste of money yeah it's so dumb. it's so stupid i i hate it sometimes i'll get a birthday cake sandwich cream and it'll be my vice yeah but that's not that expensive no it's also fine it's not detrimental to your health long term really well i mean that's a lot of sugar and i'll eat yeah though. but you're not doing it every day no i was smoking like a pack a day before it's, it's like too many. it's been like a long time since i did that actually but it's just a pack twelve dollars yeah it depends where you are i that's that's a lot yeah it's bad yeah it is bad (laughs) well everybody speaking of things that are bad um we won't be talking about our patreon that is under the topic of things that are good yeah and i think now we can actually talk about things that are good and our patreon's on there it is a pay what you want model as long as those amounts are five dollars ten dollars or fifteen dollars and you get the same thing no matter what you pay. Yep, but it's better there. Yeah. It being a nebulous term. If you, I'm going to put this out there. If you want something, tell us. And yeah. we'll Legit, we're, though. Yeah, we're That's open. not a joke. <laughs> <laughs> we're open. Like on, on patreon.com slash the corn corner. Don't just come, don't DM me. I don't. If you DM me, tell me what you want on Patreon, I'm going to be upset. And I'm also not going to see that shit because I don't check my DMs. I'm really, I don't even see my friend's DMs. I don't see my partner's DMs. I'm sorry. I told people, if you want to DM me, text me first and then I'll check my DMs. That is a legitimate statement I said to one of my close friends like last week. Anyway, patreon.com slash the corn corner. You can make requests there of what you want us to do. They do not 
get to be adult oriented because Patreon doesn't allow that. And also because Cause it's we don't want to do that corner. here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Also because that's why we made this fucking podcast. We got we got episodes about the goddamn Pop Tart. This isn't the place for any of that stuff. That was a great one. Um. Well, are there any other action items that we need to put out there? We should do. We should make a faux interview questionnaire okay. for people who sign up for the Patreon. People love paperwork. Yeah, and, but it's like three to five questions. Okay. And when you sign up for the Patreon, maybe that's what the welcome note is. Here's mm. your interview to being a corn dog. Oh, that's smart, right? I'll forget this as immediately as that uh, we say recording a lot of gets shit turned on this off. Podcast that we don't remember. I really think that I will do putting my vegan recipes up because they're not recipes. I'll just yeah. probably take a shitty cell phone picture and be like, "This is what I made tonight." But yeah. I think people like that. I really do think you should do that. Or the- I'll do like a review, like you do the burger reviews. Yeah, when, with my own meal. <laughs> Um, the other thing that I do on the Patreon is I put up my photo work. Yeah, which is actually sick. It is sick. Because there's so many more pictures that you take than what you post on social media. Yeah. You're very precious with the ones on social media. Yeah, I'm all too precious. Also, Instagram is the worst possible pl- platform to look at your work. <laughs> yeah, it really sucks. It's so small. It also sucks because the aspect ratio is all suck. And yeah. it's It really, it really, really sucks. It's not a photo sharing platform. No, it's not. It's a... Which well, is so I, ironic to say now, isn't it? Well, <laughs> listen, we're past the 40-minute mark, I think, on this podcast. And this is the part where we just talk yeah. about things. Um, but I really do think that... It's funny because putting the work out there, people don't care about it. But the behind the scenes, people care about more. It's kind of like with the, with the magic trick. Mm-hmm. When the secrets revealed stuff, people watch that over watching the show and the trick. Yeah. And that's like, what it feels like so, like social media is. It just sucks that there's no place to put the work work. Yeah. That people work can be want like to engage with. Yeah. But I'm that's getting... That's why you make website, but... but... Yeah, I'm kind of trying to... I'm getting that going, and I've got it. It's up. It just... Yeah. It didn't spark joy yet. It's not really personal. That's what, like, the Patreon is legitimately kind of like a more personal place. Because you, yeah, you post... All the shit you take, it's yeah. pretty fucking frequent because I see the comments in my email about yeah. people praising you. Yeah. And I say, that's my girl. That's my girl. It's my baby girl. Ruby in there. Everett in there. Who else is in there? Violet's in there. Who else says nice things? Tonya. What's it, what's there? Who am I thinking of? Sophie doesn't say much nice things. Rude. Hmm? I swear there's someone else I'm thinking of that has a video game character name. I keep thinking of like Sonya Blade. Sophie? No. Because Sophie's... There's rain. What's, what's Sophie's... Maybe it's rain because of blood rain. And my brain is just not great. I haven't had EDD meds for a while. Yeah. It's not good. <laughs> Pale objects in there. This You're getting yourself in... You're digging yourself in a hole. You're naming favorites. Yeah. And you're not going to name someone who's important. That's why I'm not trying. Yeah, I'm trying to think of this one person that's been there forever. Oh, Ruin's been there since like day one, by the way. Oh, yeah. I That picture I posted on Instagram... Uh, of like a photo dump of pictures you took of me and I didn't know anyone who was with me in the picture but I was like I'm sure there's someone that's like one yeah. of our friends and it was like little teeny ruin over yeah. here <laughs> like <laughs> two feet shorter than me <laughs> Sierra's in there I'm trying to think who else who is that person in there I'm trying to think it's one person I'm not going to engage with this because no, I'll fuck not. it up because I can't think of the person's name right now does it kiss me deadly at all uh, who's that <laughs> Well, everybody, <laughs> check out Kiss Me Deadly Doll. It's um, you can email Kiss Me Deadly Doll, Kiss Me Deadly Doll, um, at Kiss Me Deadly Doll That may actually be it. It is it. Don't tell. Them. <laughs> That's if people, she, she wants people to For reach out. Bookings, home. not just to yeah. reach out. Or talk about the corn corner. Jesus Christ! I guarantee it. God, <laughs> just say something. Subject line: Cam and Ren Corn Corner, and then talk about Corn Corner guest spot? Question mark. Yeah. <laughs> We want you. Yeah. I mean, we actually probably will do guest spots in the future when I live on the East Coast. Yeah. yeah. We've never been against guest spots. We just haven't had the place to do guest spots. Yeah. But we maybe we will when I move and you come visit and I force you, you know, up there. I mean, I'm definitely, I got to go over there. And I'm actually kind of happy that you're moving over there because it gives me a reason to get over there. It's going to be great. I'm very excited. Well, we're so. doing one. We, we we can do one. Can we do that all? What did you just say? <laughs> we can do one with Kiss Me Deadly Doll. Yeah. We can do Castle Jackal one. Yeah, Here well, talked about it. she yeah. she just needs to get up there. Anytime we've been with her, we always have our um, plates quite full. 
Well, I'm tired now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> you want to do the sign off? What is it? Just stay fresh? Stay fresh. Yeah. I like that. You said it kind of sultry. Stay fresh. Stay fresh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.